Was Dorian Yates, because I, I, the Brits lo will lo love to mention this, was he uh, an influence as well on training style, motivation, et cetera? Again, it was, it was a, an opportunity. I, mean, I saw Dorian several times and went to his seminars. So it's also just to take him on board and what he was doing. Obviously, I come from a different, you know, I'm, I'm natural. Dorian won't, won't dispute that he wasn't natural. So oh. doing everything that he did, was probably not right for a natural guy, in my opinion, but I would take it, lean into it and see if I could glean anything from what he did. So it was understanding what he did and how that could apply to a natural setting. What, what were some things you learned specifically from Dorian that you implement to this day? I mean, simply from his back exercises. So a lot of the back exercises he did, a lot of people do a lot of wide grip stuff. So I went more to a close grip, which Dorian was saying, you, you don't, you know, if you want to build a wide back, you, you go close grip, you don't go wide grip. So it, it was, under, again, it was more around the biomechanics stuff of what works and what worked for him. Ah, but again, so that's I what... Understanding how he trained, you saw him getting injuries because he was full throttle in it all the time. And you thought, oh. well, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, that I'm already doing that. So I want to pull back from that slightly. Ah, so, okay. So, you know, this is interesting. If you, if you're cool with it to just, to just tap into this topic, just a smidge, because you did mention your, the training to failure thing is something you implement, but then now you're, yeah. spe you're speaking on behalf of the blood and guts, we'll call it the Dorian Yates kind of approach where there's a, there's a line of, okay, do I go that far with the intensity or now you're saying, okay, let me back off a smidge. What does that look like? What does that mean to you when you say that? So when I, when I, when I was doing some of the blood and gut stuff, you would you would have one tricep for legs. You know, you would you would do what was it now? Let me try and remember this. Um, leg extension, leg press. It was squat, leg extension, leg press, squat. Yeah, it would be one tricep. Everything all out. You know, you'd get your workout done in six minutes. Right. And you would be puking up on the floor, but you'll you'll you're going too too far the other way and obviously you know there's a way i mean i train the pre-exhaust way but when you train pre-exhaust pre-exhaust and you're using multi-compound exercises particularly when you're incorporating something like a squat that's a very technical lift and you've got it got it on if your legs are like bambi and you're trying to squat a heavy weight you're already setting yourself up for failure so it's still utilizing that training to failure but you've got to be training on solid ground you've got to have a good stable base you know so that's where i backed off that that sort of aspect because everybody has a, a routine that they kind of go back to because it, it works well for their schedule they enjoy mm -hmm. it they can recover from it etc cetera, etc cetera. listeners enjoy that because it's intriguing especially for someone who's a who has such a decorated contest history like yourself how did you do things so I'm not one of these push ball leg guys, which is the, the fad at the minute. Don't do that. 